you know, they'll, they'll, uh, you know, they would, they would, uh, not say anything because they're worried about, oh, that could be a $1,200 repair, you know, because if you replace one tile, they'll say, oh, this tile doesn't match anymore. We got to get a whole new, a uh, couple rows here and f between here and the next stopping point. And, uh, that's just part of doing the business, um, is, is getting their trust and, and then, you know, to get their trust, you have to deliver on your promise. And the problem is when you're doing an estimate or bid or, or quoting anybody, anything, a delivery time, you need their money. And guess what? You know, they, they're like, yeah, keep talking, keep promising. But then later on, you got to deliver. And that's the hardest part. And, and that's also trust too is the delivery method um when you're when you're delivering the product now you're a little bit tired you're not as spunky as when you're giving the estimate or the quote and now you're like oh god i gotta i gotta do all this i don't feel like doing this and but no you do that and and they know it and and when you're done they're like oh there's another notch there's not another notch of trust and you really you start to to uh get them excited and and then they want to work for you they they want to be your your advertisement they'll hand out cards flyers do whatever um tell their friends which is ultimately more than that's the first social media is people saying hey i got this great uh, person uh, here's his business card and that's where you you have to be um you know if you do want to to have any type of um growth so once you get your your business at a point where it could it could grow and you could start charging more, you start charging more dependent on how many customers you have. If you don't have any customers, you got to be the lowest common denominator. And you know, once you start um, cramming your schedule and you're like, uh oh, I got people on a waiting list, then you just charge more. You just keep on your raise, raising your prices, pretty much every customer until it kind of evens out. But you do have to remember you you can't do that when it's your your busy season because then you're you're gonna get screwed in your off season. So um, you need to to find a, a sweet spot, something to where people aren't gonna run scared in your off season. Um, and if if you're only gonna have like a couple shorter weeks because of your how much you're charging, then you could do so because you are making more money. Therefore, ultimately, you want to make more money and do it in less time so you just gotta gotta do the math um you know it's it's a it's just kind of a, a weird thing to to do business now and you got everybody thinking that they're going to be king of the world you know because they have their um their social media and they got a lot of followers and you know they think oh everything's great the economy's good but as soon as the economy tanks things are going to start to change um you know, it's just a, uh, it's just a different world, you know, like I, I get a little bit of money and, um, you know, I'll go to like the swap meet or whatever. And, um, in fact, I went last this Saturday, no Sunday. It, it was the morning after my, uh, my lift incident. Um, my wife wakes me up at eight. I got to bed at one in the morning, but I'd get up at eight. I was just exhausted because I worked like probably 20 days straight before that. So anyway, so I get there um and it's hot it oh my gosh it, it and i don't do well i'm i'm half dutch so um you know i'm i'm just like a pasty gangster man i just ugh. so and i had a gray shirt it seemed like a good idea at the time I, I don't like white shirts they tend to get dirty having four kids um at least i'll blame the kids and uh because i'm always tinkering with something so you know that's the story in itself so anyway, so I, I get there and it's hotter than hell and I'm just like, oh, this is horrible. And so I meet my mother and father-in-law there and they're sitting, um, they're, they're by the food. So we go over by the food and um, there's a shady area and then there's a blistering area. It's like surface of the sun. And uh, where do you think they were sitting? And, you know, they're all Hispanic, so I'm like, great you know they have no problem just sitting there in the sun and like are you kidding me <laughs> they're all wearing black shirts and hoodies and i'm dying over here and i go you know what i can't handle this like i, I gotta find some shade so I, I find a table underneath the the shade 
and I, I get there and um, and then they come over to where I'm at and no sorry my wife comes over but they stay where they're at and I'm like I go hey how come they're not over here in the shade well because they have that spot picked out I'm like well picked out or not come and sit in the shade it can't be that bad when they're at my house they look for the shade and uh i don't know if it's just a spot it's not like they they set up camp or anything um and uh so they're they're holding out over there and i'm i'm in my shady spot and i'm like god it's about time i feel good and i'm like i can't handle this anymore so uh, they got up and, and we're walking around and I had to go buy a white shirt. That's how hot I was. Um, just to, anything to, to turn it down a couple degrees. So I buy a white shirt and, uh, uh, you know, a little bit better. And uh, and then I'm holding my one-year-old and he starts crying. He runs hot like me. So we're both sweating on each other. It's just like a, a sweat fest, you know, and ugh. And uh, his hair is all wet and you know, from sweat, and I have a hat on him, but you know, it just it only does so much good. It's just like like putting an umbrella over um, you know the, the sun. You know, it's just, it just it can only block out so much. And so I um, I said, you know, t- to hell with this. I, I told my wife, I'll, I'll meet. I'm gonna go find some entrance, uh, some shade by the entrance. So we start walking towards the entrance and. And there's no shade. The only shade I saw, there was a, a power pole, and it just went straight up. And it was like a, a maybe a you know the, the shadow that it cast was maybe like a foot and a half wide. So I was sta- standing in the shade of a the shadow of a power post, trying to cool down. But the you got the blacktop that's like 110 degrees. I'm sure, you know what's the opposite of wind chill. You know when it's it just gets that smoldering um, effect. So I'm I'm sitting there and like a you know like a third world beggar. I'm like you know what this is stupid. You know here I got you know uh, I got to go to the car. You know I got a nice car, tinted windows, and you know it's got I got uh, what is it uh, Bose stereo in there, and you know I could be watching a Netflix movie and, and leather seat. What am I doing here? So. Um, I try to uh, start my car. It's a, um, I got that Uconnect on my phone, but the stupid app, um, I, I for whatever reason, the app got erased. So I had to download the app. So I'm holding my one-year-old. He's crying, and because uh, my wife, she's on the other side of the um, the stupid swap meet. So uh, I go, I. I go to find, you know, the Uconnect. I'm trying to uh, start it. And I said, oh, your credit card. There's a problem with the credit card. So I call the 800 number. And she's like, oh, it sounds like there's a baby crying in the background. That's terrible. What, how can I help you? And I, I told her, I go, look, you know, we're dying a heat stroke out here. I want to get the stupid car started um, through my phone and unlock it. But you guys are saying there's an issue. And she's like, oh, well, what's the email? And it's like, I'm telling her the email, Rolex, V's, and Victor. V or B? And and it's like, I should be past this point because I called on my cell phone that it's registered to them. I told them the email that it was on, and it was the email because I was looking at it on my phone. And she's like, and then she goes, well, do you have your, uh, your identif- the, the vehicle registration? And I go, you know what? I go, never mind. I go, I go <laughs> I'm sitting here dying with my son. And, you know, if I have privy to all this information, you know, would I be calling you in, in a panic, you know? So just at this day and age, you know, it's, it's amazing um, that they can't move that through because of a, 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 I think I switched credit cards or the free trial ran out or something. I don't know, something stupid. And uh, so I say to hell with that. So I sit out there and, and, uh, and, and finish sweating. Oh, that was horrible. But that's uh, you know, swap me. So yeah, if anybody you're looking for something to do, uh, this uh, what is it the the third Sunday of each or second Sunday of each month? Um, yeah, Pomona swap me. Great place to go. Just bring an umbrella and uh, make sure you uh, you have access to your UConnect. So um, yeah, so we're we're looking at um, at pushing these products, and it'll be interesting because you know I don't think this is. You know, typically it's not documented when when companies are starting it's how they're they're starting and, and I kind of go you know I'm, I'm diverse enough to where I, I cover a lot of different 
um, genres. You know, the, it, it, I could be a giant food manufacturer next year. Um, the service company could could grow. Um, I could stick to hell with it and go work next to my son at McDonald's. So it's who knows how the year's going to go, um, but I, I do like to document it. Um, and I think what happens is you always hear from the success stories after they achieve success because then they become interesting. And while I do try to stay interesting, um, you know, you can only do so much on, on a, uh, a podcast with, you know, while you're driving. Um, but it's, it's, you know, from the very beginning, I've always said I want to be conversational. I, I don't want to have so many stats, none of which you are going to remember anyway. Um, so uh, uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's kind of a happy medium because one thing I noticed too is, uh, like when a lot of things are going down, we're all like, you know, there's so much stuff going on right now, like in Charlatan and everywhere. Um, everybody wants all these details and the details there, it's, it's okay. Except for a lot of times, isn't it just for what you already believe a lot of the details. And if, if you're just looking for details to kind of, uh, already talk about your opinion on things, well, that's not completely honest, but it's also not wise because I think the wisest person is one that could, well, I don't want to say hold out judgment because some, like when OJ, uh, you know, he had a, a murder weapon and he said he was golfing, looking for, uh, chipping golf balls at 11 at night and, uh, he left blood at the scene and you go on and on. Well, look, I don't, I don't need to wait for a court case to, to at least render an opinion because I'm not, I don't have the power to put him in jail. So I don't need to wait and hear all the evidence. People are going to tell you, Oh, I hear all the evidence. Um, no, I can form my opinion. But the difference is if I hated OJ and now OJ was convicted of murder, I'm like, aha, I knew it all along. Look at this SOB. Well, you know, not looking at any of the evidence. Well, that's no different than than what's going on now. And, and I look at uh, what's what's happening um, with these these protesters. And um, you know, somebody died. And and I think if you're on one side, and I'm not talking about the side of the the, the white supremacists. They're they're a bunch of idiots. And and there's only so many of those people around. Um, I mean, it, it's not like a, a percentage wise. It's not like it's 20% of people are, are white supremacists. Um, I mean, I think it's in the single digits. I mean, sure, uh, yes, it, it's, what, if it's 5%, it's 5% too many, but you're always going to have idiots. But guess what? You're going to have Indian idiots. You're going to have black idiots. You're going to have Chinese and, except for Puerto Ricans, and probably 10%. But uh, you're, you're always going to have your Indians, and that's just the way Indians man, I went off on a tangent. You're always going to have your, <laughs> your white supremacist. And, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. And, and you can't change that, but you can't use that to forward your narrative. Um, and I, I think that, yeah, there, there are some people that were probably, um, wanting to, uh, uh, to preserve, you know, whatever the statue means to them. And that, that's fine. You know, whatever. Um, because once you start, when if you start off, oh, I already hate America, I already hate this, and then you're like, oh yeah, we're gonna take this down because yeah, it has something to do with with it's not a direct connection with racism, but um, it, it does have a, a a tie to it. Then you know you're gonna start taking down all the uh, you know all the forefathers that that had slaves and and start you know removing their um, their names from things and then and our history. And the thing of it is is like I say, uh, uh, you have to judge us to where we were in our time. In other words, you don't want somebody now to own slaves or think slaves might even be a good idea. But back then, people thought different. Uh, you know, and I think that, and I'm going to go on a limb, if, if let's say somebody did have slaves, I mean, it's... I, I, you know, I, I don't know uh, all the terminology, but I know some slaves wanted to stay where they're at because they were just taken care of. Um, and, and I'm sure it's, it, it's not, not the majority, but 
um, you know, they would, uh, like, even in the Bible, they would put the, in, in